loss. An Orem family loses everything in a house fire. Find out what started the blaze. Sharpshooters, target shooting is a popular hobby for Utahns, but one county is taking actions to keep the community safe. And rush for romance. You've only got one day left to buy presents for your Valentine, where you can go to show your loved one you care. I'm Karen Sullivan. And I'm Kristen Firmage. It's Wednesday, February 13th, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications. This is the award-winning 11 News at Noon. The man who police found on fire on Monday this, died this morning in the University of Utah burn unit. 22-year-old Sean Ryan Romero had burns on nearly 80% of his body. This 7-Eleven on Columbia Lane in Provo is where paramedics found Romero on fire. He had a record of recent arrests tied to drug use. Police say it isn't clear if this had anything to do with his death. An Orem family is homeless today after a propane space heater started a fire in their garage. 11 News reporter Whitney Thomas was on the scene this morning. After Orem firefighters worked to put out the fire for over two hours, a family of seven was left with no home and no cars. A propane space heater started the fire just minutes after it was turned on to warm up the garage. Hello. While many people use space heaters during the winter to keep warm, heaters are especially risky when run with propane in small enclosed spaces. Any type of you know, gas operated space heater is not good in a garage, in a home or anywhere that's enclosed. It's just not uh, very safe. You need to keep them away from anything that can start on fire, and you need to monitor them. Don't leave the room. In Orem, Whitney Thomas, 11 News. Restoration Company will work to secure and then knock down the house within the next few days. Police don't know whether insurance will cover the damages or if the family will rebuild. Three more businessmen have stepped forward accusing new Attorney General John Swallow of illegal activity. In a copyrighted Salt Lake Tribune article, the three men independently say that Swallow indicated campaign donors would get special protection at the AG's office if there was ever a complaint against them. Swallow was campaign manager for then Attorney General Mark Shirtliff. Both Swallow and Shirtliff deny any wrongdoing. The FBI is already investigating bribery accusations against Swallow and by St. George businessman Jeremy Johnson. Plans for a new shooting range are on the drawing table because of safety concerns on the west side of Utah Lake. As 11 News reporter Lucy Tingey tells us, stray shots and trash piles from target shooting are making the county take action. The Lake Mountains on the west side of Utah Lake are a stretch of undeveloped land welcoming horseback riders, hikers, and anyone else who wants to enjoy the outdoors. But Bureau of Land Management officials and community members are worried that one sport is taking over the land. There have been so many target shooters that have come. They're shooting um, kind of on, on top of each other, and it's created a public safety hazard, as well as they bring something to shoot at, and so there's also some dumping issues. The red shading indicates restricted areas where target shooters aren't allowed to go. But with a quick turn off the highway, I soon found that some shooters aren't following the rules. One. This entire area is covered in everything from old shotgun shells to paper bags and plastic pieces blown to bits. Bureau of Land Management officials say poor planning for target shooting areas might be the reason behind all of this. One proposed solution is for the county to create a fenced off shooting range where officials can better regulate flying bullets and trash buildup. Bureau officials say they want the community's input, something that hasn't happened in the past. I think that discussion still needs to happen and people have an opportunity to really become involved and to contact their com com commissioners, uh, contact the BLM if they choose. In the Lake Mountains, Lucy Tingey, 11 News. The land man says they'll finalize a plan in the next year to 18 months and then start working on something long term. A Dodge Caliber struck a pulled over highway patrol car on I-15, prompting Utah Highway Patrol to issue another warning for safe driving. The officer parked in the emergency lane has minor injuries. Highway accidents involved 14 troopers last year, and the UHP wants drivers to slow down and move away from patrol cars parked on the shoulder. A hack on the emergency alert system announcing a zombie attack hit KSL radio waves yesterday. The same broadcast reached two TV stations in Michigan and two more in Montana Monday. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the body
bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Experts say the hack came from overseas. Authorities are troubled by the prank and worry it could ruin the integrity of the emergency system. Sir, cyber criminal officials are investigating how it happened and how to fix the system from being hacked again. What is it about Valentine's Day that gets everyone so hopped up on sugar and gifts? 11 News reporter Maddie Wright tells us about Provo's last minute rush for romance. If there's one thing college students are good at, it's procrastination. It's the day before Valentine's Day and people are scrambling to scrounge up presents for their sweethearts. Supermarkets become every romantic's paradise in the days before Valentine's Day. Candy shops stock up on all the holiday favorites to prepare for the rush of people, and the BYU bookstore is no exception. It's definitely picked up a lot. People getting their sweetheart stuff. <laughs> Stores have to plan in advance for this kind of rush, but it's hard to tell exactly how much they will sell because it is so last minute. Employees may be busy, but it's days like these that give candy companies an extra boost. Americans buy more than 58 million pounds of candy in the days leading up to Valentine's Day. Now that'll satisfy a sweet tooth. Stores sell more than half of their Valentine's Day cards within six days of the actual holiday. Some people even wait till after Valentine's when stores need to get rid of their red and pink candy and make room for Easter goodies. My advice is to go buy all of your Valentine's Day needs on the 15th because then everyone's trying to sell them out. Oh. That's after everyone's already been on their dates and like, who don't have to worry about my girlfriend for another year. Macy's steps up their flower power and turns into an entire display of beautiful blooms for the picking. Florists actually recommend waiting to buy flowers until the day before, but you should still put in an order in advance to make sure you get the bouquet that you want. When 11 News at Noon returns, still climbing will show you how one outdoor activity you can take indoors that will get you prepped for swimsuit season. And presidential proposals, Obama delivers his State of the Union address, what he has planned for America. President Obama delivered his State of the Union address to both houses of Congress and millions of Americans watching at home. The stakes were as high as, as wasn't anticipated. Reporter Emily Schmidt has the story. The President of the United States. <laughs> In his fourth State of the Union address, President Obama laid out the agenda for his second term in office. The state of our union is stronger. The focus of tonight's speech, how he plans to improve the economy and find work for the nation's 12.3 million Hello, America. unemployed Americans. Broad-based economic growth requires a balanced approach to deficit reduction. With spending cuts and revenue, and with everybody doing their fair share. Warmly received by Democrats and mostly dismissed by Republicans, the president will need help from both parties to achieve his goals. Let's set party interests aside and work to pass a budget that replaces reckless cuts with smart savings and wise investments in our future. On foreign policy, the president announced a major troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, 34,000 by this time next year. On immigration reform, he pushed for a path to citizenship for the 11 million illegal immigrants currently in the U.S. Each of these proposals deserves a vote in Congress. And on gun control, he made it clear he wants action. The families of Oak Creek and Tucson and Blacksburg and the countless other communities ripped open by gun violence, they deserve a simple vote. Following the president's speech, it was the Republicans' turn. Florida Senator Marco Rubio delivered his party's message. And therefore, as you heard tonight, his solution to virtually every problem we face is for Washington to tax more, borrow more, and spend more. President Obama said that none of the ideas proposed in his speech would increase the deficit, and Republicans were quick to point out that none of the ideas carried a price tag just yet. The manhunt for Christopher Dorner turns to flames in California. Josh Powell's brother commits suicide in Minnesota, and, a Colorado, and Colorado debates gun control. Here's our look at news from across the nation. 
After days of searching, fish and wildlife officers spotted alleged cop killer Christopher Dorner driving in Big Bear, California. Police chased Dorner into the cabin where he hid for hours. Dorner opened fire on the police, killing another officer. Police threw smoke devices into the cabin, which caught on fire. Police never saw Dorner leave the building. To identify the remains of someone in a building, and that could take days or possibly even weeks to do a DNA analysis or a forensic dental analysis, depending on the condition of the body. Police found Dorner's driver's license inside the cabin as well as charred human remains. Josh Powell's brother Michael committed suicide in Minneapolis by jumping from a parking ramp. He leaped from the structure Monday afternoon, just six days after the vigil for the Powell children, Charlie and Braden. Police still don't know what led to Michael's suicide. And Colorado Democrats advanced gun control bills yesterday after a full day of debate. Gun control advocates spoke of the need for stricter laws while opponents said the bill infringed on Second Amendment rights. Colorado Democrats moved forward with bills that require background checks for private, private gun purchase and set ammunition limits. And that's your look at news from across the nation. Karen? The cold weather prevents many outdoor sports from getting off the ground, but as 11 News reporter Scott Gardner shows us, rock climbing enthusiasts say it's just as good inside as outside. The cold weather doesn't slow these rock climbers down at all. It just changes their destination. Climbing indoors at places like Hanson Mountaineering may not bring the same level of adventure or excitement to the sport, but it has its own rewards. It is a good workout. It hurts your arms, but it makes you feel tough once you get to the top. Fitness experts say an hour rock climbing at moderate intensity can burn 550 calories. Climbers say that's great motivation to keep going upwards. Whether you want the freedom of bouldering, which is climbing without a rope or harnesses, or the security of using all the gear, an indoor climb can help you get warm and stay fit during the winter. You can feel when you gain five or ten pounds or when you lose five or ten pounds on a wall and it, it helps motivate, like, I don't really care too much about weight personally, but it is a benefit to me, I know, that if I lose five pounds, it's easier for me to climb. People who witness this extreme sport may think it's dangerous, but climbers say that if you wear all the safety gear, there are very few injuries. Nice outdoor climbing weather may not return for a few more months. But until then, people wanting to scale new heights can train on an indoor rock wall. In Orem, Scott Gardner, 11 News. With every foot you get off the ground, you'll climb too. And that leads to better muscle definition and a healthier life. Well, it's good to know we have something to do in this cold weather. But Valentine's Day should be warming things up a bit, right, Brenna? Well, I might not have the best news for you if you want warm tomorrow. It'll be cooler and it might even snow a little bit. I'll tell you how much to expect when 11 weather... Tell you what, it was a cold one yesterday, but it was actually pretty warm this morning. We hit the 20s in northern Utah, which is a big change from yesterday. Most of that is due to this cloud cover that you see on top of the mountains here. That's going to stick around for most of today and into tonight as we start to see maybe a little bit of snow. Walking outside in Provo today, 25 degrees is our current temperature, 86% humidity. That's pretty average. And wind speed calm, not too much to worry about in Provo at least. Um, going into this evening, we'll see the sunset finally hit 6 o'clock. The days are getting longer, and the snow that's going to hit is going to move in about uh, 11 p.m. tonight. And you know we're only going to see an inch or a half an inch possible tonight. The snow might continue into tomorrow morning, in which case we'd see a little bit of flurries until about noon tomorrow. But really, I'm not expecting more than an inch or half an inch on top of the snow that's on the ground already, especially in that northern Utah area. Let me show you where it's coming from. You see this storm cell hanging out right here in Idaho and Washington. That's what's going to move down, but it really is going to zip right past us. We won't see too much accumulation. The temperatures will drop and those clouds will stick around though. But you should also take a look at this. In the, on the east coast, on the seaboard, you see this huge storm. That has been there for weeks and it's not going away. They're getting more rain and snow in the southern and northern areas. And they're starting to see some flooding. The sea level's rising, so be aware of that if you know anyone on the, on the east coast. Um, highs around the state are average for this time of year, maybe a little cooler than usual, but they're a lot warmer than yesterday. They went up maybe two or three degrees, sometimes even five across the board from yesterday. Provo hit 35, Salt Lake's highs 34, Logan's up at 30. The snow that's going to hit us tomorrow is going to be a lot higher. There's going to be more accumulation in the northern part of the state than the southern. Uh, 37 in Moab, Cedar City is high of 42 today, and St. George has 57. They're just going to keep moving up in the world. If you want to be somewhere warm with your Valentine, I highly recommend 
Benjamin, Kanab, or St. George. 57 is their high today, and they'll hit 60 for Valentine's Day. That's a nice treat. And towards the end of the week, they're actually going to warm up even more. And into President's Day next weekend, they'll see some more sun, and that's going to be nice. The lows again in the 30s. That's pretty average this time of year. The Wasatch Front's a little different. Today, we have a lot of clouds, though. In Provo, the sun just barely started to come out. Thursday, we're going to see some of those flurries. Friday and Saturday will be pretty average days, not, not really hitting the 40s, but spending some time in the 30s. And then the snow should the snow should move out by Thursday and the clouds should come in on Sunday. And you know, we need to be aware of that. We've seen a lot of snow and clouds, and that's gonna make the air quality actually pretty bad today. I should let you know the air quality level is moderate, meaning it's gonna be kind of tough okay. for small groups. Oh, thanks, Brenna. Okay, so AJ, we know what we'll be doing in tomorrow. What about you and your Valentine? Got a big day lined up with the women's basketball team at BYU, so that I got a lot to look forward to there. But next on sports. Rejuvenated Jazz. Um, Utah welcomed and looked to mute Kevin Durant and the Thunder as they welcomed the best of the West to Salt Lake City. And the King James Version, LeBron is rewriting the record books as he continued his historic play against the Trailblazers. Sports is next. Keep it locked. The Jazz were back at the ESA last night in desperate need of a win after losing at Sacramento. But they didn't have any time to catch their breath, though, welcoming the NBA's leading scorer, Kevin Durant, and the high-flying Oklahoma City Thunder. We'll pick it up in the second quarter with Russell Westbrook leading the break for the Thunder and drops the dime to the aforementioned Mr. Durant. But the Jazz would respond to the defending Western Conference champs. Look at this ball movement. Randy Foy kicks it out to Paul Millsap, who was money in the bank. The young guns for the Jazz were getting involved as well as Alec Burks slips this pass to Derek Favors, who knows what to do with it. The Jazz would maintain a lead throughout the game, and with Al Jefferson leading the way, would outscore the Thunder 25 to 13 in the fourth quarter and go on to win 109 to 94, halting OKC's four-game winning streak. <clears throat> if you haven't been following what, Le what LeBron James has been doing the last two weeks, stop what you're doing and pay attention. Listen to this stat. Over the last six games, LeBron has taken 92 shots and he's missed 26. What? That's 72% shooting from the field while averaging just under 31 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists a game. But don't take my word for it. Let's roll the tape. The Trailblazers were the latest to witness the majesty of the King as they visited the Heat in Miami last night. We'll jump to the fourth quarter where LeBron with the, with the two-headed facial. And if you think LeBron is only doing it on offense, think again. Ask Damian Lillard, who gets swatted. Miami in transition. D. Wade kicks it out to Mario Chalmers. And with the tray, splash waterfalls. And just so the King doesn't feel left out, Ray Allen leads this fast break and dishes it off to LBJ, who brings Miami fans to their feet. That's six straight games with 30-plus points and 60% shooting. There simply are no words to describe this guy. So enjoy it while it lasts, sports fans, because this is pretty something special. And from the hardwood to the wrestling mat, the wrestling community is still reeling over the International Olympic Committee's decision to scrap the sport from the 2020 Olympic Games. A lot of people are scratching their heads at the decision to drop one of the world's oldest sports from the Games. Wrestling officials say they will attempt to appeal the decision. And if you've ever dreamt about sitting courtside at a Lakers game like I have, you might want to watch out for this guy. A former Lakers great found out the hard way last night. There was a familiar looking security guard at the Staples Center for the Suns Lakers game. Comedian Will Ferrell is usually all about laughs, but he was dead serious about escorting Hall of Fame Lakers great Shaquille O'Neal from the premises. He's got the stare, the stash, and the jacket. This is all too good. Uh, that's just a joy to watch. And last but not least, huge Champions League match today. Real Madrid and Manchester United. But uh, how about Will Ferrell doing his thing at the Lakers game? Was there a comedy halftime show? That's what I want to know. I mean, that guy's living the life. Lakers game, Emmy Awards, you name it. He yeah. looked pretty stern, though. <laughs> Still to come on 11 News at Noon. Best in show, the Westminster Dog Show ended by choosing one pooch to take home the gold. We'll be right back.
There's a new top dog at Madison Square Garden, and he's making a new name for his breed. Five-year-old Banana Joe became the first often pincher to win Best in Show at the 137th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Banana Joe's handler says Joe is smart and knows when it's showtime. Often pinchers have monkey-like facial features, and Banana Joe is no exception. The crowd-pleasing champ wowed judges with his muscle tone and fantastic features. And not only did Banana take home a blue ribbon, but he also got a Broadway offer. Was it for Star Wars? Because I think he looks like a Wookiee or like an Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's 11 News at Noon for Wednesday, February 13th. You can join us anytime on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon.